Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Sciences. Video 19, it's on mining. In 1848, at Sutter's Mill in California, James Marshall discovered some gold. This kicked off the gold rush. Over 300,000 people came by land and by sea to California to strike it rich. A few did, most of them didn't. The people who did make money were the merchants who were selling the mining equipment. But what is mining? It's extracting valuable minerals from the earth, locked away in the earth and locked within ore within the earth. Now we need minerals. My computer is made of minerals. My glasses, my ring is made of minerals. We need minerals. The problem is that they're formed naturally and they're distributed unevenly. And so we're going to have different reserves in different parts of our planet. Once we discover those reserves, however, mining allows us to pull it out. Once it's gone, it's gone. These are non-renewable resources. It's not like uh, crops where you can plant them. Once they're gone, they're gone. What do we do once we've pulled the ore out? We process it, and what's left over are called tailings. Now, there's a lot of different types of mines. We have what are called surface and subsurface mines. Surface mines could be things like strip mining, open pit mining. We have mountaintop mining and placer mining. Subsurface is where we actually dig down below the surface. Now, we've had legislation that's been put forward to encourage mining. The big one was in in 1872, that was the General Mining Act, which encouraged mining on federal lands and offered protection to miners. They could stake a claim. Now, there are impacts of mining, of course. We have contamination of the air, the soil, the water. It's a decrease in biodiversity and also it can be dangerous to humans who are doing the mining. A hundred years ago, being a coal miner was incredibly dangerous. You could develop what's called black lung. And so since then, we put forward more legislation. In 1977, is the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act, also known as SMACRA. It's a way to regulate coal mining, but also reclaim some of these old mines. And so what do we need? We need minerals, valuable minerals. They could be in the form of fuel, like coal, we can have metals, and then we can also have non-metals like gravel, for example. How did these minerals get there? They're formed through this rock cycle. And so, for example, as igneous rock is cooled, you're going to have minerals deposit deposited within the rock. They can also come out of solution, but the key point is that it's somewhat random on our planet where those minerals are found. This shows you the uneven distribution of those valuable minerals. So, for example, we might be able to find gold. But a lot of those minerals are owned privately, and we don't even know where they are. The key point is that they're non-renewable. This is Hubert's uh, peak theory. And so if you look at, for example, oil extracted in Texas, once they discovered oil in Texas, the amount increased, and then it dropped off. If we look at other parts of the U.S., it increased and then it dropped off. Or Norway, for example, it increased and then it dropped off. Once we discover minerals in an area, we're going to deplete those minerals in an area. And so everything is going to have a peak. We'll have peak coal, peak oil, peak gold. It's all eventually going to run away. And so how do we get the ores out? How do we get the minerals out? Imagine this is a mountain that I've kind of sliced in half, and you can see some of the valuable ore inside it. So how do we get to it? Well, we could do what's called a surface mine. So that's what they were doing during a lot of that gold rush. You have these big troughs. We have a placer mine where we dig the ore out and then we use water to rinse it off. And then we've got the tailings that are left at the end. We could do mountaintop mining where we literally remove the top of a mountain. We could do strip mining. This is really common with coal. So we're going to build strip after strip after strip and then we're going to extract that ore. We're left with a lot of these tailings. We could even get to ore that's really deep. So this could be a giant copper mine, for example. Open pit, we dig down from the top down to the bottom. Some of these are kilometers across at the top. Again, we have that same problem of all, what do we do with all the tailings when we're done? Or we could do a subsurface mine where we sink a shaft and then we're going to dig out those ores as well. Once we got them, then we have to process them. We have to grind up that rock. And lots of times you grind it over and over and over again. So if we're looking at, for example, a copper mine, now I've got these really small uh, ore, and so I have to extract the minerals. So I could do that with chemicals, and also they'll use bubbles. So this is froth filtration, where we'll get the minerals deposited on the surface of these bubbles. We extract them that way, and then we use smelting, which is heating them up. We get different densities, and so we can pour off a lot of the what's called the slag, the minerals that were the metals that we don't really need. But when we're done, we're left with what are called these tailings, and it's hard to get rid of those. This is red mud. It 
comes from the processing uh, that, that gives you aluminum. And so legislation has been put forward to increase the amount of mining. In 1872, the General Mining Act allowed miners to mine on public lands and also allowed them to stake a claim. So you get 160 acres, and so you don't have to worry about somebody else grabbing the ore. You can build up your mining equipment and develop that. Of course, there have been impacts over the last 100 years. You're removing the soil. You're removing a lot of that biodiversity. We get some of the minerals moving into the air. A lot of it gets leached into the soil, and it's really dangerous for humans as well. And so in 1977, more legislation was put forward. SMACRA, Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act. It instituted the Office of Surface Mining. This kind of falls to the level of the states. And so they're regulating coal mining, but also it allows for reclamation of lands. And so this coal mine is actually in Europe, but you can see what it looked like years later. So we remove the soil and then we're putting all that back in and hopefully we get that biodiversity again. Now this problem never goes away. We have thousands thousands of abandoned mines in the US. You maybe heard about this one in 2015, the Gold King Mine in Southwest Colorado. It was a candidate for a Superfund site. EPA was monitoring it, but you had a rupture of the dam and we have all of these uh, chemicals spilling into the river that move through Colorado and New Mexico. And so it's a problem that we'll have to deal with into the future. So did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in all the blanks? I'll try to. Again, what we're looking for are valuable minerals. And so the reserves are going to be where they're found. We eventually create what are called tailings. Uh, surface mining could be strip mining. We also have open pit mining. In 1977, we had SMACRA put forward as a way to govern coal mining and increase reclamation. So that's mining, and I hope that was helpful.